What's up guys, Shade Tree Surgeon back here again with another race video and hopefully this time I managed to not delete all this footage. We are coming up on the second to last race of this season and then there'll be no more race videos all the way till August. I definitely want to do these two races and I definitely want to do them well. At this hair scramble in Ormond Beach, I'll be joined by Dylan on the YZ250 and Nolan who you saw in a previous video training to race. No, and I'm, I'm fat. This is hard for me. God damn. Is actually going to go on this race. So it probably won't make sense on the timeline that you're seeing these videos in, but at this moment, right before this race on Sunday, Nolan's only actually been off road on his Husqvarna 250 a couple of times. On the video you guys saw him in, we went out and I did two hours of riding with him off road just so he knows what it feels like to ride off road for two hours so he's prepared for the race, but that's pretty much the only prep that he's done. Nolan travels for a living so he doesn't have a huge chance to do a lot of races and I normally would have recommended that he go out and practice some more maybe on some sand at Kroom but if he doesn't do this race now he doesn't know when he's gonna get a chance to do another one so he's just gonna go and fucking do it man I don't know I think that that's super inspiring that a guy who has been watching some of the videos and watching people race online and basically went out and got a dirt bike and said you know what fuck it I've been out riding a couple times let's just jump in feet first and do a goddamn race I just I really really love that of course Nolan's like six foot six and even his muscles have muscles so he's in a little bit better shape than your average dude but ah uh, you know it's still gonna be a crazy experience for him and it's still gonna be nerve-wracking even though he's done lots of stuff so I'm just I'm, I'm super excited for him and I'm super excited that he's coming along and he's doing his first race and getting into this sport with all of us it's been a little bizarre for me to transition from student to I wouldn't I would not say teacher teachers not the word I would use because I don't feel like I have enough knowledge to teach somebody but I can share my knowledge and I've been doing that with Nolan and I sound like I said it feels a little weird to do that but that's what I do with these videos and that's what I do with a lot of you guys who are watching this is I say you know what through a whole lot of trial and error on my part I've managed to garner a small amount of knowledge and I know what not to do so at least I can share that so I've been sharing that with Nolan and hey he's gonna see how it goes this Sunday I just hope that Later on, I'm not going like, oh, well, gee, fucking. No one went out and did this race and broke his fucking leg. Anyway, we'll see what happens when we get out to the race this Sunday. Got a couple more parts I'm going to put on the bike, too. First things first, I'm going to try to install this steely flywheel weight. I, did, I have put a steely weight on my girlfriend's KX100 that was quite a bit heavier than this. This is only five ounces, so I don't know how much it's going to actually help. And you actually have to pull the flywheel off to get it on there, which is quite a bit more pain in the ass than Jessica's KX100 was because that one just bolted right onto the outside of it. A little bit of work for five ounces, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot and see how I like it. So taking my stator cover off uh, to put this flywheel weight on, I discovered that there was definitely a little bit of moisture in there. Yeah, you can see it right there. Also got this grab handle I'm going to throw on the bike, something I should have put on there a long time ago. I can't tell you how many times I've dropped my bike in the woods and I think, man, it would make my life so much easier if I just had something to grab onto to lift it up and kind of save energy a little bit. And that's really in races what it's all about is conserving energy. You want to meet out your energy in dribs and drabs and anytime you crash, or anytime you have to pick your bike up, it's a huge suck on your on your stamina, and you wanna do everything in your power to use as little as possible in places that aren't helping you get a better place. And last, but certainly not least, something I am just absolutely so stoked to be putting on this bike. This is my P-Tech Bash Guard. And when they say Bash Guard, they mean Bash Guard. This thing looks like it came off like a medieval knight's horse or something like that. You put this on the bike, that motherfucker looks like it's ready to do battle. Now, believe it or not, even though everybody and their mother makes skid guards, not a lot of people make a skid guard, pipe guard combination, which you really need for a two stroke. If you can look at this, and of course you'll see it when it's on the bike, this not only is a normal skid guard here on the bottom, 
but it wraps completely around the pipe and protects your investment of the pipe. I mean, two-stroke pipes aren't expensive, but they're certainly not cheap. At about 250 bucks, it's not something I wanna be replacing all the time. I'd rather spend the extra money, have this bash guard. Now, if you live out in California or Colorado or anywhere that there's rocks, this thing is a must have. Here in Florida, we, we don't have a lot of rocks. You've seen most of our terrain is sandy. Most of the hard stuff in our terrain comes from roots and logs, which you can dent your pipe on, but we don't have the rocks that California does. So you might say like, why, why would I need something like this? Why I really wanted this is from forward impacts. That's impacts coming this way because that's what fucked up my old pipe. This is the stock pipe that came off my bike. And if you take a look at it, it looks pretty fine on the surface besides, you know, being nasty from all the shit I put it through, but you know, it looks fine. I really didn't think there was that much wrong with the pipe, but what had happened is from forward impacts from crashes and hitting trees and falling down hills and all the stupid stuff that I do because I suck at riding dirt bikes, this pipe had actually gotten smashed in. Now, once I took it off and you look at the backside, it's all crinkled in and dented on the inside where it folded in on itself. And not only had that happen, but it had smashed in enough that it was actually melting the plastic case that covered my starter. I have a bash guard on the pipe. It came with a carbon fiber pipe guard, but guess what? While that might prevent chips and dings and little things flying up and hitting the pipe and creating uh, dents in it, it does nothing to prevent me smashing the front of the pipe and bending the whole thing in. This will. This is gonna make sure that unless I really, really fuck up, which I'm not ruling out of course, I'm not gonna ever have to put a new pipe on this pipe. Now that I have that gnarly pipe on there, that's the pipe I wanna stick with, I'm gonna stick this on there too, and as far as I'm concerned, that pipe is gonna last the lifetime of my motorcycle, which is not something people usually say for two-stroke pipes. Check these guys out, they're out of Estonia. It's a company that's owned by people who compete in the six days competition, so they know a thing or two about building pipe guards. This thing is pretty fucking beastly. It just looks fucking badass. Like I said, it's like some some knights, medieval knights horses armor or some shit like that. Makes me feel like I'm going out to do battle. Of course, I probably won't live up to how badass this skid plate is, but <laughs> I've got it, that's for sure. All right, guys, that's gonna go ahead and do it for the garage portion of this video. Time to load up the bikes and head out to the race. All right, I got the truck all loaded up and I'm on my way to pick up Dylan. We gotta drive clear to the other coast of Florida for this one, which isn't that hard because Florida isn't super wide, but we're not exactly getting an early start. It's almost three o'clock because Dylan couldn't get the day off of work. I took the day off of work because uh, we're camping out this time and there's no way I could work till three o'clock in the morning and drive all the way out to the other coast and be ready to do this whole deal. So and when they're a little closer, I do that. So I'm hoping we get there before dark because as you can see, I'm in the F-150 this time. I'm not sleeping in the back of the F-350 because I'm with Dylan, but he's got a tent and I really don't feel like setting up that tent in the dark. So hopefully we get there before the sun sets. Oh, with a couple of minor detours, we're now following this guy pretty far down a dirt road. Uh, we did get lost, so it looks like we're going to be arriving just in time to set up Dylan's tent in the dark. Assuming, of course, that this van knows where they're going. That well, looks like a dirt bike van to me, though. Got the orange arrows, so fingers crossed. So apparently we got here in plenty of time. I didn't have anything to worry about because this tent is claiming two minutes. So let's start the clock and see how long it actually takes. So color me impressed, this was actually pretty easy to set up. It was a lot bigger than I expected. This thing actually comes with its own butler. Definitely have the biggest tent here. I don't wanna, you know, I'm not saying anything, but I'm totally saying something. If you need some size reference, there's another tent. <laughs> As we're still still going around this to our, our veranda. This is 
about as much as the race as we can see from inside the truck because it has been pouring rain the entire time. Actually, I didn't even finish filming my uh, practice lap because my go puck died. Now, we've been seeing some pretty miserable morning riders through this little, <laughs> this little slit in the woods over here. And uh, pretty soon, we'll be joining those very miserable people. And once again, Nolan, I am sorry, dude, but you are getting a hell of a first race, man. It's going to be brutal out there. I got to wear my mechanics. I can't find another one. Doug said he walked out there and looked at the track. He said, yeah. I'm not putting my bike in that shit. <laughs> yeah. oh, All right. Embrace the suck. <laughs> Poor Nolan, man. <laughs> he, he was just going like, dude, I've fucking been through all this stuff in the military, all this training, all this crap that I have to go do that just absolutely sucks. And I get through and I come out here to ride dirt bikes and hoping everything is going to be good. And instead, it's this. It's just like, like, the, like just as bad as shitty military training in the mud. Poor fucking guy. What heart, though, man! I swear to God, dude. There's a lot of people who would not have who would not have gone through with this. Like, look at this starting lineup. It is sparse. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. Gotta get top ten. I, I'm a top ten guaranteed, dude. <laughs> Do you will you hold Dylan's bike for him? Yeah. Awesome. He's got a kickstand, but it's always cooler if somebody holds it. Like on the rear brake, I'm like. Did you just like buy a bike and all the gear and this is like your first time out? Yeah, kind of deal? Dude. Pretty <laughs> much, dude. Yeah. Isn't that fucking badass, dude? Dude. Props. And it's not like he doesn't know what he's in for. He did the practice lap. He <laughs> really doesn't know what he's in for now. Three Fuck. Arizona. One day was you. Yeah. Today's my eighth day riding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Technically, <laughs> like all the road. Oh, God. Yeah. Dude, team. I walked down the trail right over there by where we're at. Mm -hmm. Just got looked at it a little bit. That was all I needed to see with the convince myself. Nope, not my bike in there. <laughs> An electric start took a dump. Oh, I'm, I have to kick my bike like a peasant. <laughs> it's gonna be brutal out there, dude. Good luck out there, buddy. Hey, thanks, man. Good to see you too, brother. We're literally watching people almost get stuck in the first freaking turn. Somebody already is fucking stuck, dude. You know it's bad when the first turn is bad enough that motherfuckers are stuck in it. Damn. Fuck. <laughs> you ain't been in a wet race like this. Never. Never. This is my first one, man. I have. Oh shit. It's almost time. Hey. Good luck, man. And it was just like done. See ya. See you on the other side, dude. <laughs> it's all, I always feel like I'm staring down the barrel of a gun looking at the front of the bike, don't it? <laughs> 30 seconds! I don't care who you are. This is when you get nervous. 10 seconds! <laughs> oh, two hours of suck. Here we come. <laughs> Oh shit, somebody down in the first fucking corner. Holy mackerel. There ain't, there ain't gonna be no looking good in this race. Fucking ridiculous. I am not trying to be a hero today. This is fucking treacherous. 
head down, man. I do not want to take a face full of this shit. I got I to gotta make these tear-offs last for the whole fucking race. A lot of guys are just losing their goggles right away, but I need mine to see. At a serious disadvantage if you wear glasses and shit like this. Man, this is like eyes open wide. Or else you're going to find yourself in a big, deep old fucking rut, boy. <laughs> I'm seeing this place like littered with goggles, man. Oh, I'm overheating like a motherfucker. Definitely putting an electric fan on this motherfucker after this. I gotta, I gotta get moving. Get some fucking airflow. You all right? Fuck. I don't know with all this overheating if I'm going to be able to finish. <sighs> What's up? I'm Josh. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here. <sighs> okay. Maybe if we both haul on it. Oh, holy shit. <sighs> Maybe straight up. <sighs> Holy shit. Damn, it just fell right in there. Hey, good luck, dude. Well, I was overheating, so I needed to might as well make myself useful while I stop. Definitely going around that shit. Just learned a lesson from that, dude. Don't trust any puddles today, boy. I'm feeling that no electric start today, boy. I should not have put poor Nolan through this. I hope he turned around. <laughs> oh, there's not going to be a whole lot of talking in this one. I thought I could talk through anything. <laughs> I believe my motor mouth has met its match. <sighs> oh. Huh? Oh fuck, I saw you going down and I'm sorry man, I thought you were racing. <sighs> Shit, kids are awake, I can get back on the course. Well, that's not good. Going the wrong fucking way. All right, back on the course. <laughs> I went back around. Head down. <laughs> now you're doing pretty bad if motherfuckers are already lapping you. Of course, I did stop twice and freaking go the wrong way. So don't think I'm gonna do very good during this race. Pick it back up. 
He can do this. <sighs> Almost lost it hitting that tree. Almost, but I didn't. Come on, hold your fucking line. I'm doing nothing but smelling clutch and coolant. This is not a super happy motorcycle right now. Holy mackerel. This is... Never ending bog of despair. Holy shit. This is the bog of eternal sadness. And my KTM is Artex. It's my average speed might be like literally under 15 miles an hour. Not even kidding. I don't know if I'm getting better at riding in the mud or getting worse, or if my stamina is getting drained so fast that there just is gonna be no better. This is just a war of attrition. Well, that guy just made it look easy. <laughs> At least since I'm going so fucking slow, none of my crashes are very serious. Just seriously draining on energy. Literally, this whole thing, the whole race, I'm not gonna include it all because it's just mostly boring, heavy breathing. The whole thing looks like this. This is the whole fucking race. Nope, that's got to be a big asshole right there. Oh, practicing pivot turns, even though that was still a weak one, is paying off. There's enough of a pivot turn to get me through that shit. Oh. God damn it. The thing I'm looking forward to least about falling off is starting this motherfucker. Not exactly easy right now. Not exactly easy. Especially since it's running so hot. Especially since it's running so hot. My old boy, Joe Diffie, starting a little hard. This is a suck fest. Maybe, I mean, is it like riding in sand where you you just eventually get used to it <laughs> and you can fly through it i mean that's what these guys are doing i don't know how i'd ever get used to this shit any kind of gas through there i'm just like slipper and slideways man holy shit man come on now Taking a leap of faith over some of these puddles I can't see the bottom of. It's gonna bite you in the ass eventually, bud. Ah, you're taking a chance. Okay. Paid off. I think I'm just getting lucky on, on line choices because without my, without my glasses, Visibility is not exactly super great right now. Fuck. Come on. <laughs> Still standing. Pure survival right now. There is 
nothing graceful or skillful about what I'm doing. I am in 100% survival mode. Oh, God fucking damn it. Sorry, man, go, go. Oh, this is bad. Go, go, go. Sorry, man. It's all good, it's all good. Run over it, it don't matter. It's a dirt bike, not a princess. <laughs> that was real fucking dumb. Let's see if we can get moving again. Holy shit. Hi. Hi, I'm. I can do it. Come on. Come on, Josh. Oh, we keep losing my front brake. I assume that's because it's full of fucking mud. Just remember, you can't trust your front brake. All right, chill out. get through this. <sighs> Probably the 20th time. I am really glad I put that grab bar on there. Oh my god. This thing is just sucking at my boots. God fucking damn it. Fuck. Should have put a front grab handle on it too. No. Get out of here. Yes. Yes.
Come on, Josh. You can do it. Fucking cased it. Cased it right on my new skid plate. Uh, that thing's gonna work out over these palmetto roots today. Holy mackerel. I just literally didn't have enough strength to keep myself from straight just falling over. Just falling right the fuck over. Holy mackerel. Holy moly, come on, Josh. Come on. Yes. I got over it. Nope. No, 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 no. God fucking damn it. Getting there. Okay. Take a second. Oh, oh this is bad. Oh, this is No, 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 no. God. F God fucking damn it. That last fall in the same place did it to me. I'm fucking done. Thank you, fuck! Thank fuck. Thank fucking Christ! Oh my god. I fucking made it. Holy shit. <laughs> Last but not least, oh man, I just finished that race literally completely blind. One fucking lap. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Oh man. <sighs> Yikes. Damn, dude. That's that's about how I feel right there, man. My man. Won yeah. You won? Yeah. Damn, dude. Hey, congratulations, dude. No, he's gone. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, congratulations, man. That's fucking badass, dude. Dylan! Hell yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you did two laps. They freaking waved the checkered flag like right after I did one. You're a freaking animal, dude. No words, right? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Nolan, let me tell you, man. 
You've already done enough other shit for people to never call you a pussy. <laughs> Anybody who says you ain't up for something after you just did that shit, you fucking shoot them dead. I was like, motherfucker! When you're, when you're All right, back. I just want to say, if that was my first race, I fucking might not be back. So this dude right here gets some fucking major props. And Dylan, who actually did two fucking laps. The fucking animal over here. Anyway, this was, this was brutal. We'll see you guys next time. This is gonna be Mr. Mr. July in the Shade Tree Surgeon calendar over here. Take, 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 taking a whore bath in the back of the truck. It's fresh rain water. <laughs> oh my lord. It's actually a lot nicer than you think it was. What's up guys? Just wanted to stick a little epilogue on the end of this video because I feel like a couple of things needed explaining. I will tell you right now, I was not exaggerating in the slightest when I say that that was probably the most physically demanding thing I've ever done in my life. There's a whole bunch of it that I cut out because if you think I left a lot of just heavy breathing and me struggling in, you should see what I cut out because there's way more of it. Now, a lot of that was self-inflicted. I wasn't riding very well. I had never really ridden in deep mud like that except in very short sections before. I'd never ridden a whole race that was just straight, thick, deep, rutted mud. It was, in a word, humbling. Incredibly humbling. I kind of went into this with a little bit of a big head. I'd had multiple races under my belt over the season. I was starting to do better and better and better. And I kind of went into this going, you know what, I, I, I got this, you know, like fucking A, dude. No one's here. It's his first race. I helped him get ready for this thing. Like, pfft. Are you kidding? Nah, no problem. That was not the case. I sucked worse than I did on my very first race. So what I'm taking away from this is, even though I've come a very long way when it comes to riding dirt bikes, I still have so many miles to go. Struggling the way I did, struggling through that race, and watching people just fly through the mud, it made me feel like the very first time I ever fucking rode a dirt bike. So I'm sure the comment section is gonna be full of people telling me how to ride in the mud, and don't get me wrong, I'll, I appreciate it, I read everybody's comments, and I love getting advice. I will take it all to heart, but I know in my heart that the only way I'm gonna get better at riding mud is to ride more mud. Once again, huge, huge props to Nolan. Nolan actually wore a GoPro through the whole race and he even sat down after we got back home and he talked about the race in his garage on camera. So I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a video out of that. I honestly am amazed that he completed that race. You know, I, I don't mean that to sound shitty, but I'm fucking amazed. <laughs> I can't really explain to you how incredibly hard that was and the fact that Nolan barely had any experience on a dirt bike whatsoever and he finished that race. And I've already looked through some of this footage. I, I, I'm, my mind is blown. It's amazing. So instead of just tacking some of this footage onto this video, I think that 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 deserves its very own video. So keep an eye out for that coming out soon. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this race video. I've got Nolan's video coming out and I've got one last race video and then we're all done until I think like November. Two mud races in a row put a hurting on the old KTM. So I've actually been waiting on some parts. I haven't actually even been out riding. And you know how it goes. Major repairs cost major money. So hopefully I'm gonna get this thing back together soon and I'll be back out in the dirt getting ready for next season. I'll see y'all in the next video. Till then, keep it weird.